Greetings everyone, Eric here, and welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm going to be doing something that I uh, got a message uh, asking about. Uh, over on Instagram, I had gotten a message from someone um, basically asking me about the use of graphics tablets and display tablets and tablets in general being used for um, things like if you're doing a conference call for students and uh, Things where you're having to do like um, display stuff, like you're showing images, you're showing charts, you're showing information, uh, but you want to have an interactive effect with it, kind of like how you would have a chalkboard that you would write on. You would have a um, one of those uh, projectors, uh, those old school light projectors where you'd have like the the cellophane uh, paper that you would write on with markers, and it would show it on a whiteboard, stuff like that. And so I was like, yeah, that is very interesting, especially nowadays, um, considering the current crisis. Um, <clears throat> and even if this is in the future, I think some of you might find this quite interesting. Um, so I thought I would make a quick little video just showing you basically how you would go about using your tablet, uh, no matter what type you have. Because you can do this with a display tablet, you can do this with a graphics tablet. But I just want to kind of show, and this is really nothing super special or anything like that. Um, the uses of being able to use pen for these kind of things. So I'm also recording my screen here, so I can just kind of superimpose this up in the uh, up on the main screen. Uh, and let's just create a new page. Let's just have it be a normal eight and a half by eleven uh, sheet of paper. Well, we'll keep it. We'll keep it normal. So let's say, um, for instance, you had something like this, and you had the uh, you had your information on it. So let's say. You could basically use this as a chalkboard, um, like in Clip Studio, even in, um, whatchamacallit, uh, wow, my brain just blanked, in Photoshop, you can usually do something like this, where you get rid of all your tab stuff, so that you can have kind of a full screen effect, and I do know that there is, in most of these uh, software, there is a full screen option, um, I don't use it very often, so I am not as, uh, I'm not as familiar with it, just because I don't ever use it but i do know that um there is a full screen uh ability in clip studio as well um but as you can see i can easily just hit tab to get rid of things let's say you have this uh zoomed in like you normally would for a presentation or something and you're using your different colors because you can use different colors for different things and so this is like your marker. So let's say you're doing full screen and you're trying to teach. And what this allows you to do is allows you to use your handwriting. So that way you don't have to have everything perfectly prepared every time right off the bat. So you're doing, you know, you, know, you can do your regular handwriting. So you can say like, this is a, whoop. One thing you should definitely do is make sure you don't have stabilization turned way the crap up. Because that'll screw with your handwriting. So let's say we're doing like a, you know, math equation. So you can, uh, write things on the board, you can create different charts, but you can also do it, um, especially if you're doing like charts and stuff, let's do an ellipse, you can create um, your different things. I don't know what that is. That is not what I have selected. Yeah, let's just reset that back to its default. Hey, we got things here. I'm gonna have to change a few things, but let's say you uh, set up something like that, which is really handy. But you have something like that, and you have your chart, and now you can do, like, little things where you draw on it, and you can put, like, uh, like little, um, like, scribbly notes, and you can have, like, it's like, oh, this is a certain percentage of certain things, and then, you know, you have, like, your scribbly scribble percent things, and you can do s silly stuff like that, but you can also import images um, pretty easily just by just going like this, you can hit import, and you can import uh, different images. This is a Cinebench score of uh, my 30, <laughs> this is a Cinebench score of my 3700X. But let's say I load something like this in and I wanna like notate some things so I can hide that. And let's say I wanna highlight some things. So I'm like, I'm like, yeah, this is a software and I can come up here and add red and it's like, yeah, this is my score and you know, score and stuff like that. And as you can see very quickly, I can just write things out. So, Depending on the software you're using, it's really easy to use something like a tablet. And you can use a graphics tablet. I'm only using a display tablet because that's what I have installed on my computer. Um, I do have different uh, graphics tablets still that I keep. 
on hand as backups, but you could easily use this for that same uh, effect. So you'd be able to load images that you want to look at and be able to kind of play with them and do whatever you want by just writing directly on the screen. And especially because you want to be able to use your handwriting, that way you're not having to type everything up. And you want to be able to also bring up your slideshows. Now, I do know that certain tools, um, specifically in like Windows and all, if you um, were to like open up an image. Um, oh, here we go. Let's just open up this uh, random thing. This is actually kind of cool. This is a comic uh, book template for standard size comic books. But let's say you had something like this, which is pretty neato. Um, but let's say you had something like this just so you could um, do things with. But as you can see, automatically, which was pretty interesting. Uh, leave it seating. When I put my pen on the thing, watch what happens to the screen. It instantly switches it over to a drawing tool. Um, so you can easily do things like I can say, oh, yeah, pay attention to this here. And, uh, you know, things like that. Oh, wow, that's what that does. Ha, huh, I didn't know that. That's actually pretty cool. Um, and then I believe this is probably what? An eraser. Yeah. So you have that thing. You have apparently that. Oh, and it's all vector based. That's nice. You can have different tools, which is really cool. So you can very easily draw directly over your things without causing any damage. And you can do this right in Windows. Um, so if you have when if you have Windows 10, you can do this. I'm pretty sure that Mac probably has something very similar to this. So if this is something you need to do for your teaching, um, if you're doing a conference call with uh, business workers, um, stuff like that. Um, and of course, obviously, if you're doing this stuff at home as a teacher, trying to teach your students some things and you want to be able to take uh, notations yourself and you want to be able to say, you know, things like, you know, pointing things out. Stuff like that. You want to be able to do it very quickly, so you don't want to have to um, worry about, you know, uh, things not want to working the way you uh, the way you normally would. So it's really nice if you can just draw directly on things and know that you're not creating any damaging effect to the image because you can just erase the things or just don't save it like that, which undoes it. Doing so, yeah. I know this was kind of a weird video and it was very kind of just talking head and very. Um, off the cuff <laughs> and a little different than what I normally do, but I figured you would uh, appreciate a video like this if you are someone who, like a lot of people right now, are currently at home and can't leave the house um, to go to school, especially, you know, if you're a teacher, you can't do this stuff, or maybe you have other businesses, maybe you're a doctor, uh, maybe you're um, in business kind of working business kind of stuff like it doesn't matter what kind of business you work for a company and you need to be, have a presentation that you're showing to your uh, co-workers to be like you know show them different stats and stuff but you have to do it home um even in like if you're a news broadcaster and stuff like that you can still use this kind of uh, ability to broadcast things on your computer if you have the technology to do so and uh yeah if you have a drawing tablet it's really handy it's really useful um for stuff like this now I'm obviously not going to just leave this video like this. Um, I'm, I'm going to also in the description below, I'm going to give you some recommendations on tablets that I would recommend to you guys, uh, especially if you're on a budget, if you're trying to pick something up right now, you probably might not have a tablet already. And so you would like to have one. So if you would like some recommendations down in the description below, I have uh, both display tablets as well as regular graphics tablets of uh, varying uh, sizes and such like that, depending on how portable you need things to be or what kind of price range you're in. Um, obviously, if you're willing to spend a little bit more, I always recommend spending just a little bit more to get that slightly better quality or and not even so much quality, but slightly more to work with, especially in tablets. It's nice to have the larger workspace to work with. Um, but yeah, weird little video, but I thought you guys might enjoy that, especially since we're all cooped up inside if we need things to do. I'm still waiting on some products um, to try and review here. Um, I've got a tablet coming to review. Um, I have something else to review that um, I'm currently I'm actually using right now, which you might not uh, notice right away, but I will have a review for that soon. And um, basically, I'm just trying to figure out what other kind of videos I want to make. I also want to make a video, if you're interested, um, recording at home. Now, I'm going to make an entire uh, class on recording music at home. And uh, if you guys are interested in that kind of stuff, I can do kind of a quick little short video 
going over some basics really quickly, um, nothing super in-depth. I would obviously save that for the class because that's the whole point. Um, but I would still love to give you guys something to work with in case you're interested in doing that stuff. I can even give you guys recommendations on products and stuff like that that I've used and, you know, help you guys out with stuff. So if you would like that kind of content, let me know in the comment section below, as well as if you would like to see me teach uh, any type of drawing techniques or, you know, just want to see me draw a character. Again, let me know. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching this video. Um, again, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more content if you would like to see more of my content. Um, obviously, check the description for any of my social media links for Patreon and all this other crap and stuff like that, as well as recommendations to uh, different products that you can look at. And of course, look through my backlog of uh, videos if you would like to see some other things of uh, products that I've reviewed and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.